Welcome to this Vuex tutorial where we're going to quickly get up and running with everything you need to know to use Vuex in your next project. So the first thing I'd like to show you is over here in components. I've gone ahead and in logo, I just got rid of logo here. And you actually see the component, it's still in this uh, folder here, but if we go to pages and if we go into index, I've gotten rid of that component in, here in this page. And the reason why I've done this is because we're not going to be passing props down from components. We're going to be taking advantage of the Vuex store and we really don't need components in this tutorial. We're just going to use one page and we're just going to get all of our data using the Vuex store by taking advantage of the getters, the actions, the mutations, all that good stuff. And before we get started, I'm actually just going to bump up the screen size here a little bit so it's easier on the eyes. And to show you what we have on this page so far, we just have a simple header, um, header three, so like a subtitle and then we we have a button and we're going to do something kind of cool here we're going to hit a third party api that generates a random user for us and then we'll update our store with that user so we'll send a request out to that third party api and then we'll get the response back and we'll have all that data in our vuex store so let's go ahead and delete this logo component so we're not going to be using that and now let's go ahead and click on store here and we're going to create a new file just call it index.js and in Vuex, there's four main components. So we have uh, the state, and I'm actually just going to uh, use comments here. So state, and then we've got uh, the getters, the actions, and mutations. So if I go up here to state, um, I can go ahead and just do export const and then state, and that's going to be a function. And we're just going to return this object here, and it's going to be users, which will be an array. The next thing we can do is go down here to getters and just do the exact same thing, except with getters, we're actually just going to export. Um, so export const getters, we're just going to do an object, so equals object. And actions and mutations will be objects as well, so I can just go here and we'll just go down and copy this down here. Oops, looks like I missed something. And do that in actions and then in mutations. Oh, hold on. Let's grab that. What's going on here? There we go. And so now up here in actions, I can just say, instead of getters, we'll just say actions. And then down here, we can just say mutations. Actions and mutations can be um, really easy to, to confuse. So actions, the difference between the two is that um, actions um, are asynchronous. They go out, they hit, you know, like some sort of third party API and, you know, it takes some time for that request to come back. So it's asynchronous and then mutations is synchronous. It, it happens instantly. We're not going out and depending on these third party API responses to come back. And if you're not familiar with like um, Redux um, or any any of those uh, paradigms with actions, uh, basically what happens is you go out, you know, you get the data, and then once that data comes back, the mutation is what updates the state. So that's kind of the flow you can expect. There's actually a, a name for the paradigm. It's called the uh, flux paradigm. So uh, there you go. So since we're going out to a third party uh, API to get our dummy data and generate, you know, users to use, uh, we can just go in here in actions and we'll just, uh, let's just create a function. We'll call it, or method rather, we'll call it uh, get users. And this method um, in here, this is where we're going to actually put the API uh, request. And so since we're going to uh, be making an API request, we can make this async right here. And then for now, let's just comment in here and we'll just say, uh, uh, hit API to get users. And then I, I don't think we have Axios installed yet, so we'll have to do that um, here in a, in a minute. But if we just say axios.post, and then uh, we can just go ahead and pass in the URL right here. So we'll say um, HTTPS, and then random user.me, and then I think it's API and uh, for several users, we can say results, and then we'll just say like 10. And then of course that result's going to come back. So we'll have to store it in a constant here. We'll call it users. 
And then since this is asynchronous, we need to await for that to happen. And then once that happens, we then do what's called committing a mutation. So I'll just say commit. And then uh, we just give it the name of the mutation that we're going to commit. So in this case, we'll call it add users. So I'll just say add users. And then we give it a payload. And that's the actual data. And since maybe we'll want to use this um, action later on somewhere else in the app, we can just go down here and just return the users. So I'll just return users. And then down here, I can actually add uh, the mutation. So I'll just say add users, since that's what we called it. And then it's going to look the same. It'll just be a method here. And this method is actually going to take two parameters. So if we go here and we just say uh, state, and then the payload is going to be the second one. So, we'll, so in this case, it's the users. And we can then go down here and say something like state.users.push. Uh, and then we'll just go ahead and pass in the users. And we can do so by just uh, creating an object or throwing in an object in here and just spreading in a copy of the users. So now that we have our uh, store set up, we can go ahead and save this, uh, let it format, and then head over back to our page. And then on our page, we'll want some way to list those users. So I'll just go down here. And in a div, we can just go ahead and add a v4 for users and users. So we'll just say v4 user and users. And actually, this is going to make more sense in a in a list. So let's just go ahead and change that. We don't really need it to be a div. And then in this list, we can now oops, we can now go ahead and just do the list items and render out user. And one thing I forgot to do here is add the key. And so if you're familiar with view, uh, you already know what's going on here. So let's just go ahead and add the key. And let's do like user.id. Now what's cool is I can actually go down here in the script tag and with Vuex we can just say import and then put all of our helper functions that Vuex gives us. So we'll just say uh, map state is one of them. Uh, map getters. Oh look, see it's already given us a list here. Uh, map actions. Oops. And then let's see what's the last one here. Uh, map state, map getters, map actions, and map mutations. And this is coming from Vuex, so from Vuex. And then what's cool is if we go down to export default in here, and we just go ahead and add our um, computed property, we can assign that to map state. So we'll just call map state here. And then in here, we can just go ahead and pass in an array of strings. And so we'll just pass in the string of what we want, uh, which state we want. And so of course, in this case, it's users. So we'll just say users. And if we look up here, users is uh, getting updated every time the user state in our store. So if we go back to our store here in index, every time this array gets updated, we are listening for that update in this UL, this unordered list. And then uh, when it gets updated, we render out each user here. So that's pretty cool. But um, let's look up here. If we go to the get users button right here, this is the button we're going to click on to actually call that, uh, that API. So we're going to call our action from this button here. And so down here, we can go ahead and add our methods. So we'll just say um, methods, and then we can spread in whatever map actions gives us. So we'll just go ahead and do map actions. So in here, we can go ahead and just give it an array. And then in that array, we'll just put in the name of our action. So it's get users. And you got to keep in mind, um, if you're if you've got several different, you know, store modules, rather than just like index like we have here, you're actually going to have to go ahead and pass in as the first argument the name of that. So if we over here in store had something called like users, we would go right here in map actions. And then as the first argument, we would just say users. But since that's not the case, we'll go ahead and just leave it as is. And so what this has done is it's given us access to get users, right? So we have this action in our store. Let's go back to our store up here and we've got get users 
and this is where we're accessing it. And what's cool is like if I had other methods in here, um, so like, I don't know, just if it was like uh, change name or something like that, I don't know. Um, and we wanted to use the get users, we could go ahead in here and say get users and we could actually pass in um, arguments too right here. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. But what we will want to do now that we have access to get users is go up to line 13 and then um, in here we can just do an on click. And then we'll just say get users. And since we're getting users, uh, we can kind of change this text here. So get, we'll just say get users. And so this code isn't quite going to be working yet. Um, like I mentioned earlier, we are using Axios, but we haven't set that up in our Nux project yet. Um, so what I'm going to do is later this week, I'm going to add another video here pretty soon, and we'll go over how to set up Axios in Nux. And then also we'll go over getters and like what the role of getters um, is because uh, sometimes there's a misconception that everything you get from the state needs to come from the getters. And that's, that's actually, we're going to find out not completely true. So I hope you uh, enjoyed this video. If you did go ahead and give it a like and a subscribe. Uh, that way you won't miss any uh, upcoming tutorials and we'll see you soon.